uh, I got something in my eye. <laughs> okay, hi you guys. Um, so this video is long overdue. Something that I've been kind of like tiptoeing around uh, for a long time. A lot of you guys know that I am a, a huge advocate for rape and incest, sexual assault, molested victims and survivors. Um, but I have not been completely honest or uh, fully expressive or authentic about uh, who I am, my background, where I came from, things like that. Like, I haven't really expressed my entire story because I've been afraid. Um, even now, I'm not sure about the consequences that will come of this video. Um, but I thought that I express um, my background, what has happened to me. Um... I'm aware that this is a very serious situation um, and I've been going back and forth in my mind oh should I express this should I not but something has been telling me to just um, express what happened to me uh, to talk about it and to believe it or not post it so the world can see so I can help others so this is the only reason that I'm posting this and um, maybe me talking about it will allow me to heal and to also help others that are going through a similar uh a similar predicament um it's it's a lot so this video might be pretty long because i have so much to express so much to talk about um i'm just gonna let it flow out as it comes and hopefully you guys understand me if you don't i'm trying my best to just get all this out um, again, I'm trying to be as authentic and clear as possible. <laughs> Alright, so my name is Shakia Brown. I am 25. Um, I grew up in Florida, and I am a survivor of incest. This has been a family secret for years and years now. It is still something that is not openly expressed or talked about. Um, but my immediate family knows, my mother knows. Um, my mother is in love with my, uh, uh, rapist or, uh, she has taught me to love my abuser, basically. Um, uh, it's so heavy. This is so heavy. Um. I have been in denial about what happened to me for so, so long, simply because, again, I've been taught to love my abuser, um, to act as if it didn't happen, conditioned over and over again in my childhood uh, to act as if it didn't happen, M mostly because my mother didn't want to acknowledge the reality of what she lived, um, and she's a type of person who's obsessed about not being a, the stereotypical mom, um, you know, from the hood, a black woman uh, who has a husband in jail type of shit. Now, mind you, uh, I am 25 and I just recently got away from my biological family. Um, they are very toxic people. My immediate family consists of me, my mom, my dad, and my brother. Um, they all played a part in what has happened to me as far as the brainwashing, the conditioning, and the tox toxic reality I lived in for so long. Um, I left them recently. I fled. It sounds crazy, but at the age of 25, I fled because I've been under their control for so long. Meaning they've always had access to my phone records, everything else, just to keep their ass covered to make sure that the secret did not get out. But I can no longer keep this secret because for one, it is not my, it is a heavy burden for me alone to keep. And I kept it throughout my whole childhood. And now it burdens me so much, it pains me so much that I have to speak about it. I can no longer carry this anymore. I don't know the consequences that will, what will happen. I don't know how crazy my family is. Um, to cover this up as I'm expressing it to you guys. Um, actually, I do. It's a long story. Um, throughout, oh, so much to touch on. Throughout my childhood, 
um, when I would express what happened to me or what I tried to to my mother, she would always tr- shut me down or turn the other the other way. Um, um, she understands the person who did this to me is sick and they are protected even to this day. Um, to me, my mother acts from a standpoint of jealousy that is unnatural um, instead of from a loving motherly energy. Um, so again, growing, I grew up in an abusive household of uh, n- no affection, <laughs> no love, um, just very cold uh, treatment, things of that nature. Um, sorry, guys, I'm trying to stay on track. I hope you guys bear with me. Um, I, I am afraid of what my family can do to me because I'm every, like now because of what happened, I'm, I'm fearful. I'm fearful every day of how I live. Um, I've always been taught that, sorry, my phone is dying. Hold on. I've always been taught that I am crazy and that uh, basically led me to carry all this shame and guilt in myself and made me feel like it it was all my fault what happened to me. Um, So uh, I'm trying to keep on track of like let you guys know everything that happened. Okay, so growing up in my childhood, uh, the situation happened to me at a very young age before I can even speak or fathom into words what was going on i just knew it deeply pained me um growing up i suppressed a lot of my childhood like i can't even remember a lot of what went on because it was just too painful to look at but growing up i would have a lot of ptsd ptsd a lot of dreams of rape uh so it started affecting me coming back in my life um I would get a lot of readings and stuff saying it's not my fault what happened. So sure enough, a lot of things start clicking. Uh, I couldn't know uh, any longer be, I couldn't be in denial anymore. I had to face the trauma head on. So as I started remembering bits and pieces of what happened, um, I had no choice but to look at it. So I started posting YouTube videos about rape. Doing around that time, um, I was still trying to figure out what was going on. Um, my family pretty much freaked out and they tried to get me to, to pull the videos down. Um, I didn't even expect who did it, um, but again, they're trying to make me pull it down. Um, I expressed to everyone how I felt like something happened in my childhood and I felt like my mother knew. So I called her and I was like, look, um, I th- feel like something happened to me in my childhood and I think you know. How she responded was she basically laughed it off and she told me you would get no answers here. So that expressed everything I needed to know. I clicked up, the, I clicked, hung up the phone. And at that point, I was just completely heartbroken. Um, be, because at the time, I felt like the f- freedom or the thing that will relieve me of so much pain was what she was hiding at that time i slept woke up in the morning uh they didn't give me any time to process anything i was expressing to my family how okay i know someone immediate to me it was either between my dad and my brother um and so and i knew that they're being protected and so expressing this to my mother and her response told me everything so I hung up, uh, went to sleep the next day. This was like, I don't know, a year ago or so uh, that I was ex- expressing all this. I haven't talked to them in a while. Um, but next thing I know, I woke up in the morning to the police knocking on the door of my um, brother's girlfriend's house. And uh, they were trying to get me to check myself into a mental, mental hospital to cover their asses. And... Um, how I knew that is because they had no reason to um, call the police on me, but besides that I was putting up videos about rape to help other women. Um, They didn't have anything saying I was suicidal or threatening to hurt myself or anything. They just, they just simply called them 
um, I guess that was their way of trying to get me to uh, in control again. Um, but that day, I did. I refused to go with them. Um, they didn't against my will. Um, the, the chance, the first chance I got, I got two dollars from the neighbor. Uh, this is like when I was 24, like, mind you, I'm staying with family, um, two dollars from the neighbor and I fled without telling anybody to, uh, uh, the refuge of a friend's house from high school, stayed there for a while. Then I wanted desperately to get to Hawaii. And then I got to Hawaii, worked on a ship for a little bit, stayed in Hawaii and now I'm traveling. But in reality, I was, uh, fleeing from the situation, fleeing for, I've been running from this trauma my whole life. Um, and I had, I was forced to be in denial, um, about what happened to me my whole life because of my mother. Um, even now they don't op like openly express what happened. I don't expect to get apology or anything. I don't, again, I don't know how extreme they are to even find, I'm afraid that they will find me. Um, I don't know how extreme they are to try to cover their tracks as I even post this one. This is the this is the most I've expressed what happened. Um, I don't know what I have to do to uh, make sure that I'm good or um, I haven't seeked out canceling uh, yet so far because I feel like I just need to get away. Um, so I'm thinking about support groups. And I'm thinking about putting it on record somewhere just just so if something did happen, <laughs> the police or whoever, you know, may concern knows what's been going on. But it wasn't until now that I fled my family. Not only did my response that I got from my mother tell me everything that happened throughout my childhood, I, as I recalled everything that I could, um, my family will always ask me if I was raped, would I tell them? And... It wasn't until I was older that I understood that they were doing this to see if I remembered what happened to me. Because every time I told my mother, she would just brush it off because she knew. And um, so it was a very conflicting childhood that I was in. Very stressful. Very, uh, I didn't understand because I would tell them, but then it wasn't dealt with. And basically these people failed to love and care for me and protect me like they should have. Um, and it grew, it grew into this conditioning of um, now I was taught to be in denial, to feel like I'm crazy, to not trust myself. And that carried all the way into my adulthood, feeling crazy, not being able to trust myself. Um, um, and this deep pain because who I was supposed to be watched by or who, who I was supposed to be in trust of uh, took advantage of me and destroyed my innocence. Um, and they don't understand the pain that I carried every day as a child that a child should not have to carry. Um, that is actually too much for a child to carry. And this actually leads to a lot of suicides. Um, I don't believe that I was the only one that um, was raped in my family. I feel like we have an ongoing cycle of incest in my family that is unspoken about. Because, again, incest is not something that people want to acknowledge happens um, adults do rape children and it's unfortunate that it happens that way and sometimes it is by parents um, siblings like people who we think wouldn't do it um, and it is sad but it's very serious and it needs to be taken serious um, and for those of you who have been gone through the same thing it isn't your fault um, Really, I don't know if I'm the person that will have my parents pay for or pay for what they did, basically, because I was underage. Um, I get when you're trying to protect people in in your family because you love them. And there's a very thin line between mental help and incarcerating, just putting a rapist in jail. I understand that. But still, it, needs, it was something that was. There was inju in injustice there, and I don't know if I'm going to be the person that puts that person away or uh, has them pay for their karma, but I know it is my duty to express what happened to me. Um, and as I heal, as I recall more and more things, I have to speak my voice and speak up. Um, so me now, like, 
uh, what else can I remember that I can tell you guys? Um, growing up, uh, so I don't know, I'm just from a very abusive background, very controlling family, and I haven't escaped that until recently, and I'm starting to heal. Again, I don't know <laughs> what's going to come next. Uh, I do know that I owe it to myself to live my best life. And right now, that means traveling, but um, I do have to face the reality of what happened to me um, and keep talking about it. Um, what else? Again, I don't know if my family's ever going to apologize or admit what happened but again it's my duty to express it because it's been long enough um again those of you you're you're not alone i guess i'm stressing because you're not alone um i understand that there's families with deep deep dark secrets um and i know how you have to act and fake every day like your life is normal but you don't have to do it alone, and I, I'm understanding that now. I can't really do that alone. I, I need you guys to help me as well. I need you guys to support me um, in this journey. Um, for those of you who have been following me for a long time, and you may have been keeping up with my rape videos, uh, a while ago I expressed how um, it may have happened or whatever in a dorm or whatever, but that wasn't the case. It was because I was trying to figure out a way to cope with the realities of being in denial and that was my way of expressing it but I'm gonna keep that video up because maybe it'll help someone I don't know but yeah hopefully you guys understand what I'm trying to express to you I tried to get out everything that I'm saying I don't know why I've been gifted this ability to express what happened to me or if it will help someone I don't know because I know a lot of people are scared to speak out about what happened to them, but I'm gonna have faith in my journey and what's happening. Um, but I am deeply pained and it's time for me to express how much pain I truly am in. Um, every day it's hard to wake up. It's really hard. It's really, really, really hard. Um, but I keep going out of hope that things will get better and that now I devote my life to those who've been through the same things. It, my life is no longer my own um, in that sense. Um, but yeah, hopefully my existence is radical to somebody, makes sense to somebody. Um, but yeah, yeah, be dope with you unapologetically. If I come up with anything else to express, I will. But yeah, peace.